Highlighting material and rereading your notes or textbooks are, according to evidence, the two least rewarding strategies for studying. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. Over the course of the last two years, I have made mistakes and blunders which pretty much every student can relate to. I am a firm believer in maximum efficiency while staying productive. Whatever I do, I want to make sure that I can get the maximum quality output in the minimum or the shortest possible time. And I absolutely love and enjoy correcting my errors by constantly learning new ways to save the maximum amount of time while still staying on the top of my efficiency game. All the spare time that I achieve can then be utilized in other activities such as creating content for you guys on YouTube. In this video, I will be sharing the two least effective yet most commonly used techniques for studying by students. Highlighting material and rereading your notes or textbooks are, according to evidence, the two least rewarding strategies for studying. The evidence I will be using in this video is a research paper by Professor John Dunlowski who is a researcher and a psychologist or a professor in psychology at Kent State University in the US. You will find the link for all these research papers that I will be using in the description box below. I personally also used a lot of highlighting and rereading during the first year of my med school. The way I would study is that I would sit down and take dozens of notes from books, lectures and just other sources from the internet and reread those notes and documents like seven or eight weeks before the exam. If I have to be honest with you guys, I personally did manage to perform really well in my exams by using highlighting and rereading and I was a firm believer in these two techniques and would really preach about these to other students as well. But soon I realized that I was not really retaining a lot of that information that I had learned by highlighting and rereading like a few weeks after my exams. And then I started looking this up and came across a lot of useful videos by other medical students such as Ali Abdal where they talk about how highlighting and rereading were not effective techniques according to evidence. The two most effective ones are actually actively testing yourself and distributing that testing practice over a period of time. I will soon make a separate video on how I incorporate these two techniques in my own study regime. So since time is the most precious thing in the world, here are the timestamps to my video so that you can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you are interested in. Firstly, I will be giving you guys an overall conclusion for this video. Secondly, I will talk about highlighting and why it does not seem to work that well as well as some possible advantages of highlighting as a study technique. Thirdly, I will be talking about rereading and its possible advantages and disadvantages. And I'll end the video with a summary and some concluding remarks. Highlighting is termed as low utility because of its passiveness and how it does not require any active information processing. Another reason why it is inefficient is because a lot of students, when tested, lacked the ability to precisely highlight the important stuff uh, which ends up in them highlighting a lot of the material. The more you highlight, the less likely you are to remember due to the elimination of this so-called isolation effect. Studies have shown that students who receive proper training on how to highlight stuff perform better than students who did not receive such training. Rereading notes according to multiple surveys is used by almost 90% of students and this technique is also termed as low utility. The reason being that this technique is also quite passive and creates this mastery illusion which, which tricks your brain into thinking that you have developed a better understanding of the material when you actually haven't. There was an experiment conducted in 1971 by Fowler and Baker uh, who divided undergrad students into three groups. All three groups were given the same article to read. Group A was the control group which was only supposed to read the text or read the article. Students in group B were allowed to actively highlight whatever they considered as important and students in group C were given the text that was already highlighted by students in group B. All the three groups were given the exact same time for studying and reading the article. And then a week later, they were all called in and given 10 minutes to prepare themselves for 
a multiple choice quiz for the article they had read. Now, one would expect group B students who actively highlighted whatever they considered as important and group C students who simply read whatever group B highlighted to actually perform better on the test or on the quiz. Surprisingly, they did not do any better than group A which simply was a control group and just read the article without any active highlighting. So, highlighting material is passive to a great extent and does not require any active brain power for information processing. The process of deciding what is worthy of marking and highlighting might lead to students developing a better understanding or processing the information better than the students who simply read the text without highlighting or marking. Studies have also shown that when students are trained in highlighting techniques, that is to read a paragraph, decide what is conceptually important, and then highlight that information, they perform better than students who do not receive such training. Another possible advantage is that text marking might create this so-called von Restorf or the isolation effect. The highlighted material stands out from the rest and hence making it comparatively more memorable. The experiment in 1974 by Fowler and Baker also showed that the more students marked, the less likely they were to remember all of that material, presumably because of the elimination of this so-called isolation effect. Let me give you guys a quick demonstration. Pasta, chicken and rice, bread, Donald Trump, vegetables, steaks, blueberries, mangoes. You are more likely to remember the word Donald Trump if I tested you like a few minutes later, simply because of this isolation effect and how the word Trump stands out from the rest of the words that I was naming. Plenty of studies and surveys have shown how this is the most widely used technique used by students, including the high performing ones. Now you might think that well, if students can perform well with the rereading, then how come it's a bad technique? The answer to that is obviously students do manage to perform well with the rereading and highlighting. But the point is that there are other techniques out there which are termed as high utility and are much more effective in terms of not only saving time, but also giving a better output in terms of long-term memory retention. First, let's have a look at why it is not an effective technique. The reasons are similar to the ones I mentioned before when I talked about highlighting. It is a comparatively passive learning technique which does not require any extensive cognitive power for information processing. Rereading your notes again and again might help you perform better in exams, but it is certainly not the best technique for long-term retention of the material that you are learning. So there's this thing called the illusion of competence or the mastery illusion. What exactly is that? As one reads a text several times, the words and sentences in that very text become more and more familiar and hence you get more and more fluent in reading the text. This tricks us into this illusion where we are thinking that we have developed a better understanding and comprehension of the material that we are reading. However, that is not the case. Yes, you might perform good on the exams, but you will probably not retain a lot of that information a few weeks after your exams. Now let's have a look at some of the possible advantages of rereading as a technique for studying. Firstly, it is a relatively easy method to use which does not require any training. I mean, you can just sit back, relax and keep reading your notes. Secondly, it is also less time consuming. You can just read a whole chapter from your book or your notes and the more you read them, the, f the more fluent you get and hence the quicker it takes every time you read those notes. Highlighting and rereading are the most widely used methods used by students today, yet they were termed as low utility by Professor Danlowski's research. Students might still perform well in their exams by using highlighting and rereading, but when there are other techniques out there which are termed as high utility, then I would definitely want to incorporate those as much as possible in my study regime. Practice testing and spaced revision are the two most effective techniques for studying and I will cover these in my next video, so stay tuned. If you feel that highlighting and reading make you perform well on the exams, and you also retain a lot of that information after your exams, then by all means, go for it. That's a wrap for today, guys. If you found this video useful, then you might also be interested in watching this video where I talk about the three main things I wish I knew during the first year of my med school. If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.